So today I have a size 23 Lin engineering brushless DC motor. It's a, it's a servo motor. Uh, it's got motor power wires, ABC, UVW, connected to the Zenus compact. It also has halls on the back of the motor, which I've got connected to the drive. So we're going to do hall commutation, hall velocity, and hall position control today. Um, so we can see that a motor with three hall sensors will be able to detect, detect the position of the magnets and then it will be able to apply current to the right pair of wires. So three halls will detect the um, six states uh, of the electrical cycle to apply current first, you know, between the U and the V and then the U and the W. And so everybody gets a turn for coil and uh, current through the coil, which will allow the, the motor to commutate. In uh, trapezoidal commutation, um, when a motor is spinning, it produces a sinusoidal back EMF, typically, unless the winding is askew and a special design. But um, so typically, when we overlay the trapezoid over a, a sign, we get a little bump every time we go through a hall transition, which produces torque ripple. Now, you notice torque ripple when you're going slow, especially when you're trying to hold position with a hall. Um, but when you're going fast, say 1,000 RPM, and you've got some inertia, uh, everything will feel uh, very smooth. And so the basic idea is, you know, depending on the location of the hall logic, you know, if hall U is at 1, V is at 0, and W is at 0, that's a hall state. And it knows to apply a current down a pair of wires. So current goes out of U and back into W and nothing in V. And so as we go through the six hall states, uh, we get current applied to the motor. Um, actually, this is uh, a 60 degree hall that has a, a zero, all zero state. Uh, this is normally an illegal state. Most halls are, are not uh, producing all zeros or all ones. So it's, it's, it's a, a logic count that uh, not, it, they're not all high or they're not all low. But it, it's possible to have this, but most motors don't have that. And of course, as you're driving the motor then at, at slow speeds, you'll feel the, the, the torque detent or the, the ripple uh, during the hall transition. So I found the Lin Engineering brushless uh, DC motor, <clears throat> size 23 specification. Um, I've got this motor here. It's got everything I need for the motor data. It has the colors of the wires and how to hook them up and the commutation chart. And again, you can see the hall states. There, there's not all ones or all zeros. So I've wired the halls to the feedback. The motor power to the motor power wires. This is an AC power drive with 24 volt keep alive. And on the control connector, there's an emulated output. Um, I've got the stove jumper connected to bypass the safety, and I'm communicating over the serial port. So on J5, we've got the halls hooked up, signal ground plus five. If there was a shield, we'd connect it to frame. If we wanted to use the emulated output on the control connector, we've got A, A naught, B, B naught, and simulated index. Um, there's a signal ground to keep the circuits referenced and a frame ground for the shield. So I'm going to walk through the basic setup. Um, we're going to look at the settings. It's a brushless rotary motor. It's got halls, no, no encoder feedback on the motor. If we had an incremental, it would go here. Uh, I'm going to run it in position mode. You could do, you know, current mode, velocity mode, uh, with various sources of command. Digital inputs typical, or uh, can open over Ethercat's fine. I'm going to use estimated sinusoidal. So this is uh, a little inefficient as the motor spins. It becomes much more efficient with estimated sinusoidal. We could use the motor's back EMF, but Let's use the halls to get a nice solid uh, velocity control out of it. And the multimode port, of course, can be configured as an emulated 
incremental encoder output, which is pretty cool to feed off to another device. And again, we entered the motor data from, from the manufacturer. Um, there's, there's no hall multiplier, but we get 12 counts per rev because it's a four pole, which is two electrical cycles, six states, so two times six is 12 counts per rev. So with the good data, I can calculate the initial tuning parameters. And then we can see what the current loop bandwidth is without any tuning. Um, it does 100 hertz steps and looks for the 3 dB point. Uh, 400 hertz, that's kind of low. I like a kilohertz. But you can see current limits and gains are set for the current loop. We'll tune the current loop in a minute. Uh, the velocity loop has a limit here. It's set to 2,000, but uh, with a larger power supply voltage, we can hit 4,000. And back EMF constant is 11 volts per kRPM, and I've got 24 volts, so maybe we can hit 2,000 RPM. I don't want this to be the limit. Uh, there's gains for VP and VI that are calculated from the math model, and there's a typical trajectory and gains for the uh, position loop. Uh, if we're trying to hold position, we're going to have to turn gains down. If we're running at a velocity, we can crank the gains up. So it depends on, on the application. And of course, I would never use halls for position control. I'd get an encoder. Um, but with that said, you know we can play, play around with position control with halls, and we'll see what the effect is. So from the calculated values, um, well, one more step here, we should check the phasing. So enabling an amp of current, rotating the black indicator, which is a current vector of the Hall decode, uh, leads the needle in both directions. Um, UVW, if it was not the right Hall wiring, you'd have a, a going a different way. And then if you added a Hall offset, you could uh, adjust the phasing. There's a wicked lead. And a wicked lag, so we need to put the uh, put the current vector in the right position to get the halls to, to decode. You can monitor the current and the phase angle here, and uh, we're not changing any of the phasing. So we'll go right to with good phasing, we can jog the motor. So I'm going at a very slow speed, and it's very jittery. So we can see the bounce. Um, Knock a couple of zero, uh, take 10, you know, uh, divide by 10 for VP and VI. We can get a little smoother control. Okay, so I've set a little bit more proportional, a little bit of integral, and if we run at 1000 RPM, that's where it's good to operate for haul only. We can get a nice, perfect uh, velocity out of the motor. Uh, plus or minus uh, small percentage um, at speed. We're doing estimated sinusoidal and getting very perfect control. So we'll take a quick look at tuning this up manually. Um, applying auto setup checkbox, applying to the current. You can see the gain isn't very, very good. So command and actual, that's a little better. If the gain is too high, We'll get an overshoot, cut it in half, and we can add a little bit of integral in here. Oh, a little bit too much. Bring it back down. There's the integral overshoot, and we'll say that's good. Probably gives us about a kilohertz. I'm going to do uh, velocity tuning. I like to look at the current while I'm doing that. I'm going to cut the excels down so it's a little less aggressive. And I'm going to do a lower frequency. You know, 400 RPM seems like a reasonable start. So it kind of wiggles back and forth um, based on the gains. We can see the commanded velocity and the actual velocity. And again, you know, if the gains are too high, uh, we're going to get an awfully jittery motor. So I'm going to do the low gain shift. Yeah. Give it a 
hard to value. really cranking up the gains because there's not a lot of counts per rev. Yeah, it's a little jittery. But still you can see the you know the velocity performance is coming up the speed. Yeah, there's a little too much uh, gain on that one there. There, nice flat response. Um, you can give it a little bit of integral. You may see integral overshoot. We're just looking for a nice stiff velocity control here. And this will be good at speed. And if we wanted to, we can use the gain, the Hall multiplier. Uh, if we run out of range on the on the numbers here, I got a little integral overshoot. Again, the Hall multiplier is here. That's like increasing the gain. But these are sufficient for this. So you can see it oscillating, so the gain is too high. The integral is turned down, so there's less jumpiness as it tries to integrate. So this gives us nice, a uh, little bit of steady state error, but nice tuning. So we can do uh, a trajectory move. Uh, thousand revs and there we go um, let's take a look at that on the scope here current actual current let's do 10 revs and there's a profile move following error plus or minus account steady states at the end of the move and takes a little bit of current for Excel and Vcell so I've got this uh, US digital incremental encoder it's got uh, differential A, A naught, B, B naught, and uh, there's a shaft on the back of the motor and a disc with lines on it. So we got to get the, the line set here. Bolt, you, you know, screw in the encoder, and then you set the, the gap on this so that it doesn't rub on either side, and then you tighten it down with, with the hex. Um, this motor shaft has a little bit of in and out play, so you have to be careful with um, making sure it doesn't rub whether, you know, based on the bearing uh, position. So that's a US digital encoder, and you can find these here. Again, it's got A, A naught, B, B naught, plus five and ground. And there's a little cable kit with some uh, colored wires for just the pins that you need and uh, with an incremental encoder on the shaft of this motor and the halls you can do the commutation and get some really good position control and velocity control of the shaft of the motor um, so you know some applications uh, spindles running at a constant velocity anything that doesn't require a lot of slow speed smoothness uh, it's okay with halls um, there's a few applications like a sweeper where you don't, you know, you don't care how well it is at holding position. It just has some ability to stop and hold some position plus or minus a haul count or two. And, uh, you know, turn the gains down, turn the integral off for that and don't have too much, uh, proportional gain. If you put a big inertia on that, you know, turn the gain, turn the position loop gain down. Um, so the, maybe a PP of 100 with a large inertia and integral of zero. Uh, and you need the stiffness in the velocity loop. That'll help you. But, um, you know, in, an incremental encoder is by far the, the best way to go. Uh, but again, based on some applications, you can use the halls. So, yeah, after you get all your settings done, be sure to save the flash. You don't want to lose any of your tuning values. And uh, you can even save a CCX file, um, an AMP data file. Just save it a name, and uh, we can 
take a look at it later.